Tulsa, Texas morning, uh, coming from the 16th number of Psalms. Amen. Uh, and what we do not know is that. Okay, that's <laughs> better. What we do not know is this psalm is about finding security in the Lord. But sometimes we don't realize that. We live in a society now where uh, it teaches us that to find security in accomplishments. Amen. Amen. You know, what I've done in my life. and uh, 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 It teaches us to put security in, in education. It teaches us to put security in our careers and what we're all about and, and all that we want to be. It teaches us to put security in wealth. It teaches us to put security in investments and, and many other things. But, but David, David explains to us in this number of Psalms that trusting in any of these things is setting yourself up for failure. Amen? Amen. Uh, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your health, amen, somebody, amen. all the money don't mean a thing. Money can't buy you health. David says that if you put all of your trust, all of your worth in all of these things that you're going to live a stressful life filled with disappointment. You know, we look around. Let's just look at some people. We had Michael Jackson that had so much money, he probably could burn a $100 bill every day and, and wouldn't run out of money. But yet Michael Jackson was a lonely man. Uh, Howard Hughes, all the money. They still fighting over Howard Hughes' money, and I don't know, Lord, he's been dead over 20 years, but they still fighting over his money, and, 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 and Howard Hughes died uh, a recluse. Didn't want nobody around him, afraid that somebody might touch him. He just, so it's not in those things. David said that it all leads to disappointment. Therefore, David declares that he will find security in God alone. And he can do that for four reasons. He said, preacher, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked. Firstly, because God was his refuge. Hmm. And God's world would always be there and regardless of what you go through. And then secondly, it says that because God was his guide, his counselor, his wisdom. Thirdly, because God was his inheritance and God guaranteed great blessings. Then fourthly, because his joy was secure in God alone. What we're going to learn this morning, how can we find security in God? Uh, like David, and experience that same joy, experience that, 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 that same salvation that David had. We're going to start off with God is my refuge. <laughs> you ever been in a problem where you just needed some place to be, somewhere where that can hide you away from all the stuff that was going on in your life? You know, sometimes you just want to be in that, in that secret place, away from all the hurt, harm, and danger of this world. We just come through a couple of years where the pandemic told us to get in our homes and Shut yourself away and close yourself up. We've been in there. And while we were, he closed the church building. He didn't close the church. The church is in our heart. So therefore, we were able to go in our secret closet and, and be with God because God was our refuge. David trusted in God and because you got to understand David's life. He spent half of his life running because people was trying to kill him. But 
he was safe and secure in God. You know, he at first it was Saul. Saul was out to, to kill David. And then there were some of the, the foreign kings, they were out to kill David. And, and leaders all over the place were, didn't want David alive. And even his son, Absalom, wanted David gone. And David knew his, his vulnerability. And he, or sometimes we know just how far we can go. We know who's real. We know, we know how, what, how much we can do. But there comes to a point that you need a safe house. <laughs> and there's no other safe house greater than God's house. You know, we say in God, we trust. Trust God for who he is. Where do you go <laughs> when you need a safe house? Where do you go when you need someone to talk to? Where do you go when, when, when all the world don't want to hear a word you got to say, a, 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 a husband not acting right, a children not acting right, a, a people on the job not acting Where do you go when you need someone to trust? What's your safe place? What's your safe place? Some people go to the mall to go shopping. All right, you women. Y'all go buy a new pair of shoes, a new purse. Uh, just go out, just spend, just to spend. Oh, I get confident in that. I, I just go to the mall. I, it's kind of crazy to go to the mall. Now, people don't even want to go to the mall anymore. But there's so much going on. Uh, when I don't mess with them, they go online. I just heard it. See, go online. And, and, and let me get on the men. Sometimes the men want to go to the club. Hello. Or, or, or a sporting event. All of those things that you see, I want to go because I know I can go here and just take my mind off of everything that I'm going through. I can sit down and I can relax. Some people just like to sit down and, and play music. Oh, you can get in there and just cut that music on and, and some of them old songs just minister to you. You know, or you can go back and put on a James Cleveland or uh, you can go back and put on somebody. Hey, when I was going through, he brought me through. He tells me how I can make it up. Go back and get one of them old 100s. You know, uh, guide me, old thy great Jehovah. Go back and get one of them songs that, that can minister to you, that, that'll help bring you through. And all these things are great. I'm not going to say that any one of them is wrong. All of them are great. But God has given us all these things. The mall, the money, and everything. God gave you that. So and then uh, uh, the clubs, uh, the music. Uh, God gave you that for all enjoyment. But they are not real refuge from the storms. And what we need to trust in is trust God. Trust God when things go bad. Trust God when 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 things are all right. So that when you go in the storms, I know. I got someone I can talk to. God, secondly, is our guide. In verse seven, David went to God for, for not only big things, but he went to God for small things. You know, he says in verse seven, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season. You know, sometimes, we need God to guide us. The problem that we have sometimes is we want to run everything. Hello? Uh, the problem most of us have in our lives is that we always want to drive. But see, sometimes you need to slide over to the passenger seat. Allow God to drive in your life. Because when God is driving, God knows what's already going to happen at that corner. God already knows what, how, how fast that, that you better go because it might be something right up the street that's waiting on you. God already knows these things, but all these things that we just allow God to guide us in our life, allow him to drive where we need to go. You see, he already, he, he already knows everything about us, everything that we're going to come in. He said there's a real security in his decision making because God never, ever, ever makes a mistake. He already knows what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And that's the thing we need to trust in. 
See, all things work together. What the scripture say? For them, huh? That love the Lord and live according to his what? See, we got to trust God's word. But the problem that most of us have, we want to trust God's word, but we don't want to study God's word. You don't get God's word just by listening to the preacher. Amen. You know, some of us have Bibles at home, but uh, uh, like I always say, we need to go in that corner and dust that book off in the corner and open it up. You know, some of us think we can get God's words by sleeping on the Bible and we'll get it by osmosis and it'll just sink in our brain and, and God will come to us. But no, it says, study to show thyself approved rightfully dividing his word. Because see, you can get that word and people can take the Bible and take your own, take God's word and change it around and have you believe in the wrong thing. That's why you need to study for yourself. You know, I guess this is why Isaiah referred to God as the wonderful counselor. You know, give God a chance. Get him involved in your life. And I'm especially talking to my young folks. You know, because so often we say, well, you know, I, I, I'm going to do my thing and, and maybe later in life well, I, I, I'll join church and I'll get involved in the church. But I got to tell you, young folks, something. If y'all open the, the news or turn on the news and look at it, young folk are dying at a young age. We just had a concert with nine-year-old boys fighting for his life right now. Right now. So see, it, it, it's not, well, I can serve God and do all the wrong I can now and then later turn back to God. You need to serve him right now while you still have strength, while you're still able to do the things that you want to do. Learn to sing unto the Lord. All the other things are good. I'm not saying you can throw all of them out, but serve God. Put God first. And all these other things can be added later. You know, but David also know the benefits of looking to God for security. They realize what a rich and glorious inheritance he had. If you look at verse, look at verse five and six. Uh, verse five and six of Psalm 16 says, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. I have a godly inheritance. You see, we have an inheritance, church. We have an inheritance that, that man can't destroy. We have an inheritance that, that won't rot away. We have an inheritance that, that even though all of this stuff and the earth be dissolved, we have an inheritance beyond this. God said, Jesus told us in his word, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, there ye may be also. In the New Testament, Jesus told us that, that we are his children. And, and, and I, I don't know about you, but if you are a child of, in the family, then you are an inheritance of what that family has. So God has already provided for us. God is our inheritance. So what are the benefits? Why is this such a beautiful inheritance according to David? Because we are given riches. <laughs> I ain't talking about this stuff we have here on earth. We're given riches. We're given his grace. You say, Pastor, what's grace? That's God's redemption at Christ's expense. It didn't cost you anything, but it cost Christ his life. You know, that's the grace that we have. He gave us his grace. He gave us his kindness. Even in the midst of the wrong that we do and all the things we big and bad enough to do. He still loves us in spite of who we are or what we've done. That's what I like about it. He gives us his patience. You know, God put up with us sometimes. Sometimes we get on his, I, I, I can imagine God is like some of us. Well, that boy just get on my third nerve. I'm ready to just get rid of him. I ain't going to help him. I done tried to help him two or three times. And every time I help him, he jump right out and get right back in trouble. I want you to do one thing for you. I want you to look back in your life. How many things have you promised God and you turn right around and you broke it and God forgave you again? You know, it's so often we forget how, who we are. 
You know, I always say Christians are the most judgmental people around because we forget where we come from. You haven't always been in church. You haven't always been where you are. There are times in your life that, as I said, you got a lot of junk in your trunk. But, you know, you're trying to sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Time, patience. He gives us his glory. Then he gives us his wisdom. The wisdom to be able to, to, to decide and figure out what I can do or where I can go. You know, it's something sometimes we don't... <laughs> We, we don't use our own minds, but in God's wisdom, sometimes that little voice, that, that calm voice sits there and says, don't you do it. You know better than that. You were raised better than that. That's that common voice of God speaking to us in the midst of all that we're going through. And most of all, he gives us his mercy. <laughs> Oh, Lord, what would have, what would we be without the mercy of God? You know, I thank God. There are several scriptures in the, in, in the New Testament that tell us about God's mercy and how, how, how he loved us in, in, in spite of ourselves. Lord, I know I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but the mercy of God allowed me to stand here before you and be able to break the bread of life with God. And then God gives us that joy. <laughs> I'm talking about that unspeakable joy. I'm about the joy that man can't give you. You know, this is the joy that I have. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. You know, I look at it now with my wife in the hospital, my brother in the ICU, my mother-in-law in, 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 in hospice, and then you wonder about, well, 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 what joy do you have? The joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. It seems like every day I'm losing relatives. I'm losing friends. I'm losing all the people around me. But only, all of that belongs to God anyhow. And only because of him. It's all made possible through Jesus. See, we can be secure. In Jesus, not in our own ability. I don't care how far you went in school, how much education you got, how much money you got in your pocket, what kind of car you drive, how many bedrooms or bathrooms you got in your house, how many purses you got, or how many pair of shoes you got? Hello, somebody. <laughs> we can look in there. You need a whole house just to put all the purses and shoes. I'm saying, wow, all of these things, you know, we look at these things. Oh, wow, we put our security in all of these things, but it don't mount to a hill of beans. <laughs> we may secure in Jesus. Don't say what? I am God. I'm God when you up. I'm God when you down. I'm God when you have. I'm God when you don't have. I'm God when you sit. I'm God when you well. I'm God when you get up in the morning. I'm God when you go to bed at night. I am God. Whatever you need, He has it. Just trust him. Trust him for who he is. And the God I serve is able to bring you through. And you can say like David, there is security in God. You know, when Jesus went to that cross in Calvary, he nailed all our problems on the cross. He's all that we need. He's our refuge. He's our inheritance. He is our hope. Y'all know I love acronyms, H-O-P-E, heal, open, path, every time. So in all that I'm going through, guess what? I'm not worried. I'm going to turn it over to Jesus. So I'm going to say, give it over to Jesus. He'll work it out. You know, 
watch him show up and show out. You be able to look back and say, I, 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 I didn't know how I was going to make it through. And I, I didn't know what to put my trust in or, or who to put my trust in. But I, I, I put my trust in God and I can stand right here before you, lift my hands up to heaven and say, thank you, God. That's the God I serve. That's the God we need to know. Not just for today. Not just for tomorrow. But for the rest of our lives. Security. In the Lord. I dare you to trust him. And we say it all in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah,